Hello and welcome back to my channel, Empowering Aesthetic Excellence. In this series of the Aesthetic Dialogues, I'm interviewing the aesthetic experts from all over India, gaining insights into their journey, their perspectives in the most recent and most youngest and most unconventionally evolving fraternities in modern medicine, popularly known as aesthetic medicine. Our guest for today's episode is Dr. Shubha Dharmana. She is vibrant, dynamic, versatile, highly qualified and experienced medical professional specializing in aesthetic medicine, dermatology, and general medicine. She holds multiple credentials, beginning right from the Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, Diploma in the Faculty of Family Planning, Postgraduate Diploma in Practical Dermatology from University of Cardiff, UK, Postgraduate Diploma in, the general, Phys in general Practice, UK, Masters in Clinical Dermatology from University of South Wales, UK, she is also a member of some esteemed institutions, the General Medical Council UK, the National Medical Commission India. She is a member, associate member of International Society of Hair Restoration Surgeons. She is the core committee member and founder of Indian Association of Aesthetic Doctors. And she is also the key opinion leader and trainer for Geldama. She relocated to India in August 2011 after working and training in the UK for over 11 years as a general practitioner and an aesthetic physician for clinics like NSCC centers in Coventry, Northampton, and Novo, Novo London. Her brilliance exceeds far beyond the confines of her clinics. She is a beacon of knowledge, gracing the stages of prestigious national and international conferences. She has published three papers and is working on three more. She is an international speaker and faculty and has spoken at several prestigious international congresses such as IMCAS, AMWC Monaco, ISWAM Indonesia, and cosmetology conferences in USA. She is very grateful to have been selected to present two papers at AMWC Monaco last year, her oral presentation on skin modalities for reducing sebum secretion paper was one amongst the three, uh, once among the five others all over the world that got selected in Young Aesthetic Disruptors and Innovators category at AMWC, Monaco. She is looking forward to presenting at more international congresses this year. And apart from clinical work, Dr. Shubha is also actively involved in training doctors and aesthetic physicians in the country. She is setting up her own academy, which will teach fellow doctors skills necessary to practice aesthetic medicine. She is also quite passionate about skincare and has an entire line of Lejeune skin and uh, international skin range by the name of Kali, which she intends to launch with her partners overseas. Furthermore, she also has pioneered a groundbreaking innovative technique of contributing and lifting face using a combination of modalities involving procedures such as thread lift, Botox, fillers, and al therapy, which is called Dr. Shubha's V3 Lift that was presented by her at Imkas Bali. So that is the long list of achievements and accolades of Dr. Shubha. So without any further delay, let's uh, get her into this session. Hi, Dr. Shubha, welcome to the Aesthetic Dialogues. It's lovely to have you here. Hi, Dr. Bhavna. Thank you so much for having me on your show and your channel. I it's feel really privileged. Pleasure. It's my pleasure. So I hope you're all set. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So great. So without delaying further, my first question to you is that uh, aesthetic medicine is the youngest evolving category in modern medicine. And all of us who've been into exclusive aesthetics, like who have had, you who've been into this for 10, 15 years, uh, we have had no blueprints and we have had our own unconventional ways of, you know, getting started. So how and when did it begin for you? Okay, there are lots of reasons, I think, that came together for me to have gotten into aesthetic medicine. Uh, firstly, I've always been in the, you know, the modeling industry and the fashion industry, even before, even when I was doing my college years, I was a glad rights finalist. And, and then so that beauty was definitely a big part. You we were very conscious and groomed that way. So that was one part. Then secondly, I was working in the UK as a general practitioner. And at the time, I think a lot of my colleagues 
the general practitioners started discovering this field and on the side wanted to do injectables and they were talking about Botox and fillers. So when they talked about these courses, that also raised my interest. And then when I would visit India to my uh, mother, she's uh, in her 40s, obviously started noticing few changes on her face. And she would just stare at these clinics, the chain clinics, you know, the VLCC, Kaya. And she would look at, oh, they're doing some Botox treatments, some wrinkle treatments. She just seemed like interested in it. Yes. And I, as a daughter who's a doctor, you know, said, oh my God, you know, I just need to do a little bit more research into this and guide my mom. And that's how this whole thing began. I said, why not? Why, why not me do some uh, courses in my free time and that's how I got into and and then once you started there's no looking back so oh, great so that was <laughs> it was your mom's concerns that fueled the fire I guess <laughs> yeah absolutely yes great <laughs> so wow that is wonderful now uh, uh you have been the mastermind behind the v3 lift you know I've heard a lot about it so uh, and you've done some presentations and uh, on it also and it almost sounds like a facelift 3.0. So <laughs> was it a eureka or an aha moment for you? Or was it something like a gradual sequence of events that came to conscious revelation of something that could lift faces and the face of beauty, of course? I think it's been a gradual sequence of events because, you know, like very early in my field, even before all the big um, speakers and international trainers started talking about facial, global facial rejuvenation and, and facelift in general, I started doing that in my clinic way back. Um, I somehow noticed a few years of injecting just the mid phase, you know, how a mid phase can can dominate. And, and then when you're not touching on the other parts of the face, how this can create um, a disharmony, right? So I noticed that very early in my field. And then, well, a lot of these international speakers were showing, of course, the, the, the parts, all the parts of the face, but very individually. It was not put together at that time. So I started just by, on a, on a younger patient, I started just by doing the cheeks and chin, and I could see how the face became more contoured. This happens if you choose the right fillers, the right depth, and the right spots. If you hit, you can actually see that this is actually lifting the thick, heavy Indian face. It is contoured it and I already saw the contour with that and then I as I started you know more in my journey injecting the jawline and other areas of the face then I could see the beautiful difference it was making on the profile there are natural areas of the face that kind of um, droop down and then you lose those high points the reflection the high points of the cheek and the jawline and the temples give yeah. and naturally like a youthful a very youthful face and in their 20s already has that v3 mm -hmm. it's a v from the front oval shape oh, and then a highlighted three is already yeah. present mm -hmm. but you know with age with gravity all of those kind of droop down the face becomes heavier the high points are lost and we lose that glow those natural highlights are gone and this was getting restored when you do the fillers, when you do the jawline, when you do the cheekbones, this is what I noticed. And because I'm also from the beauty and the fashion industry, I, you know, the highlighting techniques and the makeup techniques, I said, I need to put this together. Together, yeah. And so that's why I called it the V3 lift. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how do you think it, uh, you know, makes it different from the traditional techniques, first of all? Who is yeah. the ideal, uh, you know, um, you know, client for this kind of technique and how does it cater to, you know, modern day beauty uh, requirements? I think it's very relevant in our modern day beauty standards and uh, because, uh, you know, it's it's taking care of the, the natural, the high points. So there's a play of light and uh, shadows That's that is happening when you're losing when there's drooping, when there's sagging and you're losing, you create this this dark, this darkness that hits your face is creating all those shadows. So it's not reflecting light yeah. to uh, the way it can reflect when when they're fuller, right? Certain areas like the hollows of the eyes or the cheeks. 
Um, so I think um, definitely the natural highlights and, and, you know, today people are doing a lot of makeup and contouring mm -hmm. and you don't need that if your face is naturally full. If you're younger, you don't need so much makeup. And even if you're older and if you're taking care of your skin and if, you're, if your face is looking full in those areas, you don't really need to do a lot of contouring and highlights. And this is what pushed me to do this. I would like people to enjoy their natural skin and not have to layer on layer. makeup. Yeah. 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 So I think um, that way, and also it's a global rejuvenation of the face as opposed to doing one unit, one, one unit. face. Yeah. Yeah. That over the years can look um, a little dominant in the face. If if we are just touching up the cheeks, not in one year, not in two years, maybe three, four years, it can look overfilled. If yeah. you're not going to it touch does, the other does. areas. It does add up, you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You think so it that is why I think it's relevant? relevant? <laughs> you already have a beautiful V3, let me say. Oh, but I, I am very concerned about my low face heaviness, you know, that's why. <laughs> I'm always very conscious about it. <laughs> Well, you know what I also do is um, Indians, we all have like heavy faces, yeah. faces uh, thick facial tissues and, and you know, it, things tend to droop a lot more because we have thick tissues, right? So I also uh, combine the injectables sometimes in, in the right kind of faces with either like a thread lift to make the lower face more slimmer and contoured or I combine it with a neurotoxin in the lower face mm -hmm. or even uh, alt therapy so these are the techniques that I use and then I do my final sculpting and contouring with my with the injectables it sounds very interesting hello yeah I think there's a yeah Okay, so our next uh, very important pressing concern uh, about aesthetic procedures is the pricing. And uh, now India is uh, anyway a price sensitive market. So um, like there's always been a, you know, a dilemma of, uh, between the, you know, value versus quality or value versus pricing kind of a thing. So how have you managed uh, to deal with this over the years? And what is the advice that you would give to beginners who are just beginning their uh, aesthetic career? So this is uh, very relevant to, uh, you know, our aesthetic practice. Um, people, I find it very challenging when people ask me why you price like this and people are offering it for lower, you know, so... There is a lot of things, there's a lot of awareness that uh, should be brought about. People need to understand that not everything um, is going to be the same. The clinics are different, the skills are different, the consumables are different that people use, the machines are different. So you can't, uh, you know, like, so the practitioner needs to decide what he wants. Does he want to have low low quality, low low money and uh, maybe even low number of clients or does he want to have a lot of clients and still have low value, low quality and make less money or you want to have like a medium sort of um, a business and potentially earning you good rewards, good profits. So you need to decide what you want. And early in my career, I've decided that it's going to have to be high quality treatments and it's going to come at a certain price. I no think compromise. the easiest analogy that I can probably no compromise because Louis Vuitton, for example, um, the people that understand brands, people that understand a high value item, they know why a Louis Vuitton brand, a bag is going to be, it is so much more durable. It is so much more stylish. It's going to step, withstand the, the you know, like the time. And it's, it's always going to be fashionable. You're going to look so dressed up. It's, it's expensive, but the value over time that it provides is it, something it's not, explained. yeah, it's not something that a normal bag can last or provide right? right so i think that is what it is the machines are expensive and this is something that you know people need to understand there are machines that cost probably one lakh two lakhs and the machines that cost 40 lakhs 50 yes. lakhs 60 lakhs 
it can't be priced the same. The consumables are different and the products are different. So I, I use a lot of brands, uh, uh, good brands, and they come at a huge cost to me. Cost, yeah. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so that's what I would say. Great. So <laughs> now there's a little fun round. You will be given two options and you have to, you know, uh, choose the most appropriate one that you think is, is the most appropriate. So, uh, like to run, uh, uh, you know, successful aesthetic uh, uh, practice, what is more is important? You should be good at selling or you should be good at executing the procedures, which is a more important attribute to have. I think uh, you, you, the basic, you need to have your skills in place. So you have to be good at injecting. Without that, there is no selling. <laughs> but then if you can't sell them, then what is the point? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that will come later when people really? realize your skills, I guess, then you have the negotiating power. But yeah. I think without skills, there's nothing else. So yeah. basic, I think, skills. Very rightly said. And uh, so you, you, you meet someone who is just beginning their career. Uh, what would would be the one line welcome that you will tell them? Will you tell them enter the paradise, welcome to paradise, or will you tell them enter the dragon? <laughs> That's really funny. So I think um, I think if they're willing to put time and effort and wait for this, you know, magical journey to happen, then it's going to be heaven. But if they want to do unethical practices, they want to take the shortcuts, they want a magic way of like achieving success maybe overnight, then they're bound to do things uh, the wrong way. And then it is enter the dragon. Yes. Well. Great. <laughs> Very well answered. <laughs> uh, so what is the, which is the one most underrated treatment and most overrated treatment in aesthetics nowadays, you know? Okay. Um, underrated treatment, I think in my clinic, since, you know, we've been like advanced so much and we buy so many advanced facial machines and lasers that we often forget that a simple thing like a peel can do wonders to somebody's skin. And you're just like bent upon selling and saying, oh, do this laser treatment. We have Fraxel, we have Morpheus, we have so many different treatments, yeah. but that's something as simple as, and especially when they don't have budget to do the, is the expensive treatment, something as simple as a peel, which is a resurfacing treatment that can give you glowing skin, that can fade away spots and help with the pigmentation and do so many things for you is uh, easily forgotten yeah. then um, overrated treatment i think would be the korean glass skin treatment oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to yes. talk about this <laughs> absolutely i think mean, like a lot of them advertise for this korean glass treatment facial is it really going to give you that glass skin, is it going to be the standard and uniform for everybody? What is glass skin? Glass skin means that you have, yeah, exactly. Just like you have to have uniform skin, you have to have flawless skin. And then whatever hydrating treatments and serums you use, you will have glowing skin. That's what it means. But they've taken it to such lengths and started devising treatments and facials with it. End of the day, you know, somebody that has pigmentation or a lot of big open pores or scars, or like, you know, they are not, or have a lot of shadows and need right. lifting, skin lifting. They're not reflecting light naturally from the high points of the face. They are not going to achieve a Korean glass skin, no matter what you do on them. So obviously they have to correct all of these issues. The, the, you, you have to make your skin as near to flawless as possible. And you have to create all those, you have to lift all those shadows, maybe do filler treatments and Botox treatments, take away those lines, take away those open pores. And that is when you, you can do these glowing treatments and call it, that's, I, I think it's really unrealistic expectations yes. that people have yes. then. So nowadays, yeah. every other consultation is about Korean because the social media is, you know, completely, uh, you know, flooded with the post related to Korean skin. And is it absolutely I don't know, medically and scientifically speaking? Is it actually a thing? You know, is it really a thing? <laughs> not a thing it's just a marketing gimmick marketing. and then people fall for it and it's also setting unrealistic expectations and when clients come and say oh i want glass skin treatment can you give it to everybody no you can't give it to everyone right right 
<laughs> so talking about unrealistic expectations, what, what are your tips and tricks on uh, managing the unrealistic expectation, you know, because oh my I'm god, <laughs> it's so <laughs> common, so common. Every aesthetic clinic yeah. has those difficult people who have unrealistic expectations. Uh, most of the times, you don't know until you've injected them, and then you land up into trouble. You know, and they're obsessed about a particular thing that you've not been able to achieve for them. But if you actually take a clear, uh, a good, uh, you know, like a history and uh, consulting skills, you should be able to set, you should be able to judge what their ideas are, what their concerns are, and what they're expecting out of a certain treatment. And if they mostly come with, you know, like wanting to look like a particular celebrity, a particular feature looking like a celebrity, it's it's not, you know, these are going to be difficult. Difficult. Yeah. Um, treatments to do Especially so even even more so like someone who is landed up in your clinic and they are you know saying not so good uh, things about uh, some other practitioners they've yeah. had. so that yeah. is the point you know you should understand they have shifted clinics repeatedly that like could you know like also <laughs> shopping around that's the red yeah. Side. yeah they these are all the red flags for sure they are but I think that, you know, like uh, having clear communication, having it recorded in your notes, mm -hmm. having taking pictures, pictures always help you and protect you in these kind of people. So before and after standardized photography is mm -hmm. extremely important. And I cannot stress um, the uh, consent that has to be taken, it, the importance of this consent. Consent right. is absolutely because these are the people that can land you in trouble and you trouble need sometimes. to have all your yeah. done and um i think uh what else was i going to say um yeah i think having like clearly communicating what you can achieve and what you cannot achieve and uh, finally i think saying no saying no if you feel that this person has unrealistic expectations then not even taking up a client like that and and just you know, stressing about it because right. there's there's going to be a little stress afterwards exactly. after yeah. you treat them. So that is what sometimes I call injectors anxiety. You know. Yeah, <laughs> we've all uh, been there, done that. Yeah, yeah, true. So, uh, by looking at which celebrity you feel, oh, I wish I could do this on this person. So, oh. <laughs> celebrity, you know, instigates that you know injector yeah. uh, instincts into you. You know, there's quite a lot of faces that I'm seeing that are overfilled. Uh, some of them do a very good job and you can't tell and they look just amazing. Right. But some of them, I think I, if I were to want to work on someone, then I think it would be Aishwarya Rai Bachchan. She mm. is so beautiful, gorgeous, classic beauty. But, you know, just like I feel that I can do things to make her face look more contour. Probably the V3 lift. Yeah, V3 <laughs> lift, yes. <laughs> the V3 lift. <laughs> I know. Uh, Sometimes yeah. you feel, okay, I wish I could do this on this person, you know. So Yeah, is. yeah. Yeah. So now uh, you have to share your secrets, you know. What is your secret and your favorite for keeping such a glowing skin and a contoured face, you know. Is it the injectables or is it the devices or is it a combination of both? So what is your secret of it? I would, uh, <laughs> I would definitely. <laughs> we say it has to be a combination it cannot be one thing you know what I've noticed is that if you're only doing a filler 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 injectable over a number of years the face can look overfilled and uh, and if you're just doing lasers and machine-based treatments then you're not addressing the areas of like uh, volume loss and right. and you know sagging that a laser cannot do um, yeah. as much as a filler can so I think it has to be an equal balance of both and that's when you will look natural you will look um, very balanced and harmonious so I think it has to be both I like both of them quite a bit wonderful that is that is something very informative because uh, I've seen practitioners who are either bent on injectables or they're either bent on devices but then the trick is to uh, you know manage the right balance between the two absolutely when you have like over even if you feel that somebody you know it, it, it just does happen the filler somebody's face can look a little bit puffy because it attracts water and then they will need these machine-based treatments to tighten to produce collagen so that the face sets into this yeah. nice you know firm shape I right these uh, equipments they increase the holding capacity of the skin you know? so yeah hold the filler exactly better. 
if uh, absolutely i love that i love hydrating the skin you know with fillers and then also doing the machine based treatments yeah. because then we are it's just like a lot of these machine treatments attract and hold on they yeah. target the action yeah good traction yeah. yeah so you get nice results yes great now um uh, social media like we were discussing about social media so influencer marketing is something that has been quite popular last few years so how do you think is it relevant to medical aesthetic or maybe any clinical uh, you know domain like influencer marketing is it relevant see i think that it really i mean we cannot totally ignore it influencer marketing is one of the big marketing uh, you know like campaigns big marketing uh, channels that that people are exploring brands are explore, exploring for a reason but you have to be careful because a lot of the times we've tried a lot of influencers you have to really vet these influencers because a lot of them buy followers they are fake yeah. influencers buy followers they know nothing there are good influencers that you can get they know their content they know their subject they've done enough research about it yeah. and they show very good content mm -hmm. so as long as you have those genuine ones who have genuinely organically grown mm -hmm. so that's a huge marketing uh, channel that you're avoiding if you totally avoid them but I, to be honest I've not really found uh, many yeah. great influencers uh, today everybody anybody and everybody is an influencer yes 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 so and the buying followers and coming to you for free to they have no knowledge of the subject what what they're propagating and no absolutely understanding, understanding they're just you know they they're acting like platforms only yeah yeah if they have a really good platform and they can understand and they can explain why they felt good right. and why what was their expectations and what was their concern hmm. then i think it can be a beautiful uh, journey thing. For they have to be people. genuine about it yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. So uh, now, uh, nowadays, like you've been practicing in Bangalore since uh, quite few, uh, many years. So more and more millennials are ending up, they're landing up in uh, cosmetic clinics and asking for injectable treatments. So what is the youngest individual that you've injected and for what indication? Um, the youngest would have been, I think it was a, a 17 or 18 year old teenager for a lip filler. And today, because like you said, the, the Gen Z, the millennials are seeing uh, there's a lot of peer pressure and they're looking at others and they're looking at their tiny lips. And she had really tiny upper lip okay. and she felt conscious, genuinely conscious about that. And then her parent was involved. So I felt really comfortable to have that conversation and to give her. And that did a lot. It, it really improved their self-esteem. So I think when you're involving uh, if you can involve your parents, it's amazing. You don't necessarily have to. I mean, you know, at 18, you're an adult, but if you can involve your parents and you have the parents' consent to do yeah. these things, it's wonderful when parents can have those kind of positive conversations yes. with their children so that kids, teenagers don't have to go back, back uh, hiding behind and, you know... Uh, don't have to go to a black market and go yes. to somebody that is not, you know, the... The mother brought in this daughter because the mother has a relationship with us and she knows that we are a genuine clinic. So that is absolutely important, the safety first. So yes. instead of taking, instead of the child finding out that there's a salon or there's somebody, you know, who's in, injecting maybe silicone into the lips, I should go get it done. They're doing it really cheap. It's yes. really necessary for parents if they can talk to the parents about it. So lip pillow is something that I have done at that at that time because she felt genuinely conscious and it greatly improved her self-esteem. But also there was a, for an under eye filler, I think I did at uh, the age of 20, 22 on somebody who was a, a cricket star's wife okay and uh it was important for her and she had this genetic hollowness and i i had to i had to touch up on that yeah okay. right and now my last question is that uh, share some interesting uh, incident in your yeah I'm, I'm sure you must be having you know uh, many incidents which are memorable which you never forget so if there is anything you want to share on this I mean, we have a lot of like in a good way, memorable way. We have like when when the celebrities walk in, of course, you know, they're like good memories, things that you cannot forget. But I, I don't want to just talk about celebrities. Um, I want to talk about also 
uh, issues that create and that warn you and that mm -hmm. you're looking out for. So there was um, a foreigner that came to us and uh, requested for fillers and we did the fillers and she was really happy. She paid up the entire amount, no negotiating, nothing. She was really happy. And then suddenly two weeks down the lane, my manager, my staff is desperately trying to reach me saying that you need to talk to her. You need to talk to her. She is threatening to post, um, uh, you know, negative reviews about you and about the clinic all over the social media. You need to talk to her. So, well, with a very, it was very difficult for me to, you know, just, just so much pressure and everything. But then I decided to calm down and then take the call. The most important thing is to open that conversation channel with them, communication channel with them. Without that, there's nothing that you can do. And uh, luckily, I got to speak to her. And then she said that she had a lot of reactions after the filler and she could not do an uh, international presentation that she had gone for she had a lot of bruising and then she said it all felt lumpy and bumpy and her face is not the same and she basically she wanted a refund for this entire thing so well I said I'm absolutely happy to give you the refund if that's how you felt about it but this is not we have the after picture and all of that and I invited her to the clinic to have that conversation and to say that I need a picture mm -hmm. I need to see this this uh, bruising or the reaction that you've had and these lumps and bumps if you're not happy can be absolutely dissolved well, and yeah. she was just so surprised that I could reverse this and she was like what you can actually dissolve a filler and she thought basically after that she was never seen never called me never came to my clinic nothing at all mm -hmm. so it was basically just a tactic she was using yeah. to get the money back and there are people that do this yes yes, yes. unfortunately yeah. so yeah he, it, was the, it was my first time and it was kind of I was just really shocked I was ready to give her a refund but the fact that she didn't never came back yeah. means she had nothing she didn't she had nothing on her face to show yeah. right so these these become uh, you know learning points you know <laughs> that's how yeah, we yeah. So. absolutely great <laughs> so i think that brings us to the end of this conversation it was lovely having uh, your insights and share i mean it's uh, the way you shared your experiences and everything so it was lovely talking to you so thank you so much dr bam i really enjoyed um, the session i look forward to seeing it soon. definitely we'll have many more conversations on this thank you very much very okay, good bye thanks yeah, take bye. care bye